Okay, it's always a good idea to just sort of start with the basics. And today we're going to talk about the basics in terms of the Elite Desk 800 G3 Mini. I want to go over some of the basic specs, some of the basic things you can do with it in terms of, of um, replacements, um, maintenance, etc. on this unit. So that that way, if you're considering the G3, if you just got one, uh, if you've been using a G1 for a long time and forgot all the stuff about the G3, this will kind of give you a, um, a refresher. So to start out with, this comes in sort of two flavors, either a 35 watt or a 65 watt. And one way you can tell is the 35 watt will have kind of the smooth, normal surface. The 65 will be vented. That's usually a giveaway. The other thing is you can look on the bottom and it will tell you. Now, this is kind of a, a Frankenstein version because it's got the 35 watt case, but it's really a, a 65 watt as far as the, the sticker. So this says 65 watt on it. The others will also say 35. Sometimes it won't even say 35, but if it doesn't say 65, uh, or if, excuse me, if it does say 65, it is a 65 watt. What that will mean is that you're going to need a 90 watt power supply. It gets a little confusing because the 65 watt unit needs a 90 watt um, power supply and the 35 watt needs a 65 watt. Now make sure in the when you are buying a um, make sure it's an HP first of all power adapter for the 35 watt make sure it's 3.33 amps 19.5 volts and for the 90 watt make sure it's 4.62 amps and 19.5 volts also um, you can find them all over the place they run anywhere from oh 10 to 15 dollars. And, um, you know, they're, they're available at lots of places, but make sure to check uh, if you don't see the right specs, keep looking. Okay. So like I said on the basics, this particular unit to open it up has a little latch on the side. All the other ones, it's a nice little thumb screw, but for some reason with the G3, they decided to, to do one of these. So you have to push and then maybe try it a couple times. Some of them are real ornery and won't open. And then that will get you inside. Now, just some basics. Of course, this is the drive caddy for the 2.5 inch SATA drive. This is the connector here. Uh, not all of your units are gonna come with one of these. I always like to ask uh, for a picture of the inside. You can always get these aftermarket, or I should say you can get them, you know, after you buy the unit off of eBay. They run, mm, again, price will vary, maybe $10, $15. Make sure it includes the SATA cable. Uh, it's nice also if it includes the screws, because if you don't have the screws, uh, you're not going to be able to, to do much with it. There's actually three, because here's a third one down here. This heat sink is for a 35 watt unit. This has aluminum here. If I was getting a 65 watt, or if I saw a picture of the inside of a unit and this was a copper color, um, then you would know that this was most likely a 65 watt unit. Um, 65 watt units use processors that do not end in a T. The 35 watt do end in a T. So as example, if I had a 35 watt system, I might see something that's like, let's say that an i5-6500T, then I would know it. If it does not have the T on it, you will definitely need the 90 watt power supply. Otherwise it's gonna beep at you and complain. So to get to more of these innards, Let's remove the uh, drive cage. I'm using a T15 Torx.
These two screws are shorter ones. And of course we've got three long ones. And then one down here. If you have a 65 watt unit, this is going to look a little different. This particular piece is going to be missing and instead there's going to be a fan here. And you're going to need to uh, disconnect the fan from the motherboard. The um, fan connector is over here in order to be able to get out the uh, drive cage. We kind of slide it a little bit because there's out there. Um, if for some reason this comes out and it happens a lot when you're doing it, there's a little plastic piece. You raise up the plastic piece, put the ribbon back in, push down. That's all there is to it. This particular unit did come with a um, Wi-Fi card. And when I bought the unit, I knew or pretty much knew that it was going to have the antenna when it has this little guy at the, at the back here. If it doesn't have this, good chance it doesn't have the um, Wi-Fi antenna. This has it here. Right here is where you would put your uh, NVMe M.2 drive. You can also use the um, M.2 SATA, uh, old school. This will accommodate both a 2280 sized and a 2230. There's a, one little screw there. It kind of bends down a little bit, but it does work and I use it a lot. One of the nice features of the uh, G3 is that it can easily accommodate both side, both sizes, excuse me. This right here is a Flex.io option card. This allows you to do things such as, um, you know, change out and put an HDMI card in there. Um, maybe you want, uh, maybe it came with VGA and you want a display port. What you're gonna wanna do with this is there's two screws right here, two Phillips heads. Pop those out, gently get underneath here, maybe with your nail, and it will pop, and you'll be able to get it out. Um, if, when you get the unit, a lot of times it will come with just display ports, just pick up one of these. Very simple, it's a um, uh, display port, to HDMI, and then you could just hook in, if your monitor only does HDMI, just plug it in here. I use it all the time, works great. And it's sometimes cheaper than uh, getting one of the um, Flex I.O. Here you've got your fan. If I stick that to the side, this is how you're gonna to get to your memory. Uh, this can take two sticks. Uh, the specs say that the max is uh, 32 gigabyte. If you're going to put in memory, I would put in two sticks. That way you get the dual channel. Uh, because if you put single, uh, you don't get the, the, the benefit of it. Also, make sure that they're the same size. If you put in a 4 gig and an 8 gig, it's only going to do the dual channel at 4 gig. Because that's the part that, that, that's able to share. If you move, remove this, the CPU is underneath here. There are the three screws here. You can use your same Torx to um, get in here. When you go to Titan, there's numbers on here, one, two, and three. What I would suggest is lightly tighten uh, each of them just to make sure that they've kind of caught the, um, the screw into the motherboard and then go tighten them down in that order. The G3 is capable of taking either a 6th gen or a 7th gen processor. So the way you can tell with that, of course, is if I have, let's say, an i5-7700, 
6500T, that's a sixth generation. If I had an i7-7700, that would be a seventh gen, and it would be an i7, and that happens to be the highest level of CPU that you can get is the i7-7700. You can get that both in the T version for the 35 watt or the non-T version for the 65 watt. Forgot to also mention that um, these are DDR4-2400 uh, is uh, the max um, speed that the uh, processor will work at. You can, of course, put 3200s and so forth in it, but the fastest you're going to get is 2400. These particular units first came on the market in um, uh, Q1 2017. Uh, a quick look at eBay showed uh, you could probably get a bare bones, which means no CPU, no memory, no drive for around $40. Uh, I saw kind of a mid-range around the $80 mark where it had a CPU, maybe low amount of memory. And then the high end where maybe around 110, 120, that's where they start doing 16 gig of memory. They start doing maybe a 512 uh, NVMe. Um, maybe you've got a faster processor. Um, these units are very easy in terms of you just get the bare bones um, and then you could add to it. Although the, oftentimes the thing that's going to cost you the most is the CPU. Um, an i5-6500T, I think you can get it for around $30. So oftentimes the bare bones is only kind of useful if you happen to have the, the parts already and then you're going to add to it. 